you cannot hold a midnight mass in the noonday sun. Welcome back to East and West, a show for helping us keep our spiritual bearings as we navigate this world around us. Wes Young here, and it has been a while since I released fresh episodes, so I'm especially excited to premiere a new season today. Season 5 will be a series of short messages that will, I hope, complete a larger arc and take listeners on a cohesive journey to someplace meaningful. But you have to finish the race to get there, and I hope you'll do just that. Today's episode, the first episode of Season 5, is entitled Midnight Mess. I mean, Mass. Mass. Midnight Mass. No, it's mess. Uh, It's a mess. Mass. Let's just get into it. The last two years, at least in our part of the world, have been a series of slumps. There have been medical slumps, political slumps, economic slumps, social slumps, and often as a result of, and certainly tangled up with these others, personal slumps. Risking a loss of dramatic flair, I'll tell you the thesis of this first episode right off. There is only one place where you can praise God in a slump, and that is, obviously, when you're in a slump. It will never be, logically can never be, any other way. The eye doctor says, can you please read me the third line without your glasses? The patient says, why yes, just let me get my glasses. No, no, I said without your glasses. But I need my glasses to see. But I'm trying to ascertain what you can see without them. Oh, oh, I got it. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, this is an eye exam after all, so okay. Just let me put my glasses on and I'll begin. It's cliche, but also true. Life is ups and downs, peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys. Sometimes you feel like husband of the year, dad of the day, a man's man and a worker's worker. Then some weaving fate behind the cosmic curtain twists a yarn or cuts a cord. And like a lens twisted out of focus, immediately the whole show seems blurred. I mean, think about it. Doesn't even the most familiar landscape seem different, visually different, after a crisis or during a grief? Now, to state the obvious, I'm a peak man myself. I hate the valleys. And I make no apology for it. All the sermons I've ever heard about how a tree's roots grow stronger in the stormy winds, or a gold's ore more pure in the fire, a muscle undergoing strain, a community undergoing pain, these don't always make me feel better. Yet the funny thing is, all those sermons are exactly true. They're just hard pills when in the valley. It's easy for me to amen them now, for I happen to be on a peak at the moment. My recent experience with the COVID brain fog, colliding train wreck style with a few other life difficulties, all at the least opportune time, Then again, when is the opportune moment for a train wreck? Was my latest valley and the inspiration for this episode. It came just as God was dragging me by his merciful hand out of that swamp. The light was beginning to shine over the distant peaks, the hope of a sunny day seeming less impossible. And at that moment, he sent a sermon from Pastor Jay at our home church, Limestone Baptist in Cochran. A sermon through Pastor Jay, but so timely as to be, no doubt in my mind, right from God. Side note, while I'm on the subject, do you want to hear from God? Then get in your Bible, get in a church, and open your ears. No podcast or live stream can substitute for the holy work of a local pastor. Pray on it and plug in to the church that God has for you. But back on topic, concerning Pastor Jay's message, this was the operative verse. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Quote, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. End quote. These men, Paul and Silas, held a midnight mass when their circumstances were a total midnight mess. 
in prison, in darkness, in no control of life, future, deliverance. And right there, about midnight, Paul and Silas bemoaned their situation, ignored a God who was clearly ignoring them, and gave themselves up to anger, despair, and complaint. No, wait, wait, that's not what it says. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. When that COVID brain fog had me so that the very machine used to clear the daily thought snows away, that is, the mind, was broken down, I felt hopeless. I've heard people describe depression to me, and I've read some powerful testimonies by Charles Spurgeon about his own battles with depression. Admittedly, years back, I thought that such talk was a bit overblown. Just get over it, I'd think. Keep on the sunny side of life and move on. All that stuff. I was just another know-it-all who didn't know a darn thing. The Dunning-Kruger effect, they call it. And even now, I don't claim to know much about it, no more perhaps than a person really understands war just because he played a particularly intense game of paintball. I'm sure the valleys and slumps in my life are still pretty high ground compared to the hells and horrors some have lived through and are living through. Depression. Still, this is not a contest, and as with much in life, there's an element of relativity to hardships. Here are the facts that we know. Number one, depression is real. Number two, despair is real. And number three, we need each other. So from one other to another, I give you this message over the internet airwaves, across the expanses of place and time, wherever this podcast might reach, you can hold a midnight mass in your midnight mess. You truly can. And what is more, it is during a slump and a valley. In fact, it is only during a slump and valley that you can live a testimony to the reality of the things of God. Let's take an example by analogy. Several years back, there was this student who, for whatever reason, was determined to hate me, to stress me and press me, to find all my this irritates him buttons and dance on them every day. What possessed him to these ends, I don't know. Though, by way of a hint, I will say that I choose that word possess deliberately. (laughs) Okay, I couldn't resist that jab. Why go into more detail? You know or have known a person like this, and you don't have to be a teacher to know a person who has identified your buttons and takes a great deal of pleasure, it seems, in pressing them. There's people like this. Difficult people, mean people, abrasive people. If they had ten shoulders, they'd have ten chips. The Bible even has a word for such a person in your life. Enemy. Is that too harsh? Well, it's the word Jesus used. And though it is by nature defined relatively, For example, Hitler was Winston Churchill's enemy, but Heinrich Himmler's friend. A dandelion is a flower in your vase, but a weed in my garden, right? So this is relativity. But when you know someone is for you in this category of enemy, you just know. All relativity aside. And let's have none of this nonsense about refusing to call a weed a weed. Oh, I have no enemies. I'm a Christian. History and indeed Your own experiences testify otherwise. We can be saints, sure, but let's not be silly. Plus, we gain nothing by rejecting the term enemy. If we say we have not sinned, we lose out on forgiveness. If we say we have no enemies, we bizarrely lose out on love. For the term, as Jesus used it, came in the context of this command. Love your enemies. This is exactly what I'm aiming at. You can only love your enemy when you are in the moment of having an enemy. It's when you are most tempted to hate that you are most unambiguously able to choose love. A lantern is more obvious in a dark cave than in a sunny field, and a love is more deliberate when it is unmerited. There's easy love, and then there's unconditional love. Thank God for the latter. Paul writes, quote, Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. End quote. 
if a person is not my enemy, then surely I can do a lot of good and godly things alongside him. I can even love him. Love thy neighbor, right? But one thing I cannot do in that moment is love my enemy. You cannot test your raw vision with your glasses still on. Similarly, and getting us back on topic, your one chance, one chance to show that you can still praise God at midnight, trust Him in the storm, fear no evil, and know that God is with you in the valley of the shadow of death. Yes, the only time you can do all those things and earn the testimony that such faith carries, the only time is when you are in the valley. I felt this truth when I was sunk in the COVID brain fog. I was down, quite low. Will I ever be able to think clearly again? Will I really be able to go back to work? Will I ever feel like writing again or even getting off this couch? I could hear God's word to me even there. Trust me. Rejoice in me. Pray to me still. Seek me always. In your fog, do not sin. That was my chance to obey him in that. And now, with my fog over and COVID done with me, it's too late. Think about that. Now, with the trial past, it's too late. Poverty and sickness, cruelty and depression, these are awful, awful things. Scourges on creation. Like sin and death, they are invaders of Satan. We love the light and we hate the darkness, and we are right to feel this way. But however we might wish that the fall and its fruit had never been written into the great script, this much at least is true. You cannot hold a midnight mass in the noonday sun. Hear that again. You cannot hold a midnight mass in the noonday sun. Take courage. Take an example from Paul and Silas. He was with them then, and he is with you now. I hope you enjoyed this first episode of East and West Season 5. I can assure you it came from the heart. It's kind of funny going back to record it now. I actually pre-scripted these or pre-wrote these a good while back. It's taken a while for me to write the whole season. And so, in fact, the COVID and the COVID brain fog and that whole slump and season of my life is long past. But as life is a series of ups and downs, the application and the principle is nowhere near irrelevant. It might not be the COVID brain fog that next slumps me down or slumps you down, but believe us, it's something and know that it's applicable to praise God anyway. Be sure to join me for the next episode, which is entitled, Where's the Line? For questions or comments, use the contact page on westyoungwriter.com. While you're there, I hope you'll check out my debut novel that is released and is on sale. westyoungwriter.com has everything you need to look at your purchase options. Until we meet again, press on, everybody.